a group of trackers have just caught a Machis tree kangaroo. There are only about 2,500 individuals left in the world, so this female is a rare catch. Hey. Oh, you the researchers carefully check her vitals and her physical condition, and they notice that she's not alone. The little joey is more proof that conservation efforts have been successful in this area. For years, the team around Dr. Lisa Dabek has been trying its best to protect these endangered tree-dwelling mammals and their pristine habitat. But how do you save a species that is almost invisible? 25 million years ago, the Australian continent slammed into Asia. At the tip of the continent, New Guinea was born. With peaks rising to almost 5,000 meters, this is the tallest island on our planet and its forests are filled with unique animals. Some of which have undergone a dramatic lifestyle change. Kangaroos are not best known for climbing trees, but with lots of leaves and few other animals to eat them, it was an opportunity not to be missed. Their limbs have become shorter and more powerful, with their curved nails, grip-adapted paws, and a pendulous tail, the Machis became experts on holding their balance. The Machis tree kangaroo only inhabits one small corner of northeastern Papua New Guinea, the densely forested mountainous Huon Peninsula. Apart from this remote spot, it's found nowhere else in the world. The kangaroos live high up in the cloud forest and are difficult to spot from the ground. Although the animals are perfectly camouflaged, they face threats like hunting and habitat loss because of increased housing and farming. Currently, the species is classed as endangered on the IUCN Red List. Woodland Park Zoo's renowned Tree Kangaroo Conservation Program, or TKCP, is trying to change exactly that. Back in 1996, founder and director Dr. Lisa Dabek brought her zoo-based knowledge of Machis tree kangaroos to Papua New Guinea and started the conservation program in collaboration with the local people. It was the first time that conservation work had been done on the endangered Machis tree kangaroo, and the start was not an easy one. You cannot actually observe their behavior directly, which is, as an animal behaviorist, is very frustrating. <laughs> Dr. Dabek and her team knew that if they wanted to successfully protect this elusive species, they needed the help of the landowners, the locals. The best trackers are local hunters who have an intimate understanding of the forests and their animals. Hey. Oh, you Oh my gosh, Eki! Eki! Oh my gosh! A man or Mary? Mary! Back at the camp, the researchers checked her vitals and gave her a mild sedative. Then they began collecting as much information as they could about her health, genetics, and overall physical condition. The biggest surprise was that this female has a tiny baby, a joey, only about a month old and still attached to the teat in her pouch. The last step of the observation is collaring. It's the main reason why these scientists are all here. We are able to see where they spend their time in the forest. And we're going to be able to overlay that on a map of the forest. And then we can look at what trees they're spending more of their time in, where are they feeding. The scientists have fitted eight tree kangaroos with the special gear. Equipped with GPS tracking and altitudinal sensors, the callers automatically transmit the animal's locations to the research team via satellite, despite the thick canopy. This collected data contains important information for the YUS Ecological Monitoring Program. The YUS area is named for its three main rivers, Yopno, Yurua, and Som, and covers 76,000 hectares of tropical forest from Papua New Guinea's northern coast to its interior mountains. Some 12,000 people live in this remote region. Dr. Lisa Dabek and her team spent years meeting with the landowners and communities to build mutual trust and an understanding of wildlife conservation. 
the villages have joined together to protect and care for the cloud forests and the wildlife within, creating the YUS Conservation Area, Papua New Guinea's first conservation area. In particular, that means that some parts of the land outside the villages is now declared as a no-hunting zone and serves as a reserve, regenerating and repopulating the entire forest. Eighteen rangers are responsible for patrolling and monitoring wildlife in the conservation area. They spend one week each month patrolling areas and gathering data about flora and fauna. In exchange for managing their forests in a sustainable manner, locals receive medical care and education. The farmers now send their kids to school. They learn sustainable animal farming techniques and also learn how to grow chocolate and coffee. The Tree Kangaroo Conservation Program also has provided a teacher's scholarship to help more than 20 students graduate from Teachers College. These teachers have returned to the conservation area, filling vacant teaching positions and providing hundreds of children with the opportunity to earn an education. In the end, the question might remain, does all the community work really help the Machis Tree Kangaroo? The answer is clear. Yes, it does. The kangaroo population in the protected area is stable, and scientists believe that it will increase in the next years. The successful Tree Kangaroo Conservation Program, which turns 25 this year, shows that effective conservation requires a holistic approach which responds to the needs of wildlife, people, and the ecosystems they depend upon. Hi, friends. Thanks for watching. Dr. Lisa Dabek and her team show that species protection is not always straightforward. It's about balance. If you want to check out another conservation story, watch our northern white rhinos. There are only two females left in the world. It's linked right here.